فاشرف بي لاشتغال بالعلم ولا تبغي به ما عشت يا ذا بدلا ويا له من شرف عظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والعاقبة للمتقين ولا عدوان إلا على الظالمين وأصلي وأسلم على من بعث رحمة للعالمين سيدنا ونبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد um, إن شاء الله today we're going to start a series in which we're going to talk about how to become a successful da'i how to be a successful da'i one who succeeds in his da'wah. What will strengthen your da'wah will allow you to go out and speak to society and teach them and educate them about Islam and to become a, as the Salaf used to be before, hurras. Hurras is a border controller. You control the borders of the Sharia, ah, not letting anything be added to it and nothing to be deducted from it. How could one be successful in that way? There are characteristics and things that are required, inshallah. That a person can become a real da'i. And inshallah, we hope to go uh, through it, inshallah. Um, the first part of this series that we're going to do, inshallah, is we are going to be, in the Kareem, go through um, the things that a da'i needs, the characteristics that are required from him. That's the first part, inshallah. And the second part, in the Kareem, is going to be um, uh, an example of the life of Shaykh al Islam ibn Taymiyyah, rahimahullah. Applying all the characteristics that we we learned, we're going to apply it on his life and start to take segments of his life in accordance to each of the topics that we mentioned. So the first one that we're going to start today with is the importance of knowledge. So we're going to look at Shaykh al-Islam Taymiyyah, how is his knowledge like? And we're going to look at the books and the things that he authored and what the people of his time had said about his knowledge. And, this, this, and, and, and the next one that we're going to look at is wisdom. And we're going to look at Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah's wisdom in the way that he gave the da'wah and how he approached matters. Um, also, hilm, to have um, forbearance for matters. We're going to look at that in the life of Ibn Taymiyyah. And also, al-anad, adam al-istijjal, not to be hasty in matters, but rather to calm down, uh, to uh, observe matters and to also verify things. We're going to look at that in the life of Shaykh Al-Islam Ibn Taymiyyah. The fifth thing which is Ar-Rifq Walid, his tenderness and softness that he had Rahimahullah in his da'wah towards people and society. Al-Sabru, his patience and how he was patient upon uh, whatever he conveyed and how that he didn't hasten to Rahimahullah. And then Al-Ikhlas was Sidq, how he had sincerity and he was truthful about what he uh, Rahimahullah uh, called to and, and uh, implemented it. Al-Qudwatul Hasana, to be a good role model, which is the eighth one, applying that characteristics on the life of Shaykh al-Islam uh, Ibn Taymiyyah. Last but not least, uh, Al-Khuluqul Hasan, to have good character, to have good uh, character, how Shaykh al-Islam Ibn Taymiyyah's characters and manners were. All of those nine points that I, I, I said that we're going to look at, because those nine are going to be the first segment of our our series that a, a da'i requires. The second part is the life of Ibn Taymiyyah and we're going to take those nine and we're going to place on him. And again, the third which is the life of a Shaykh al-Islam, Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab. Taking those nine and applying it on his life as well. To see has he come with the characteristics a da'i requires. Did he come with it? Did he have those nine characteristics uh, which uh, was required? So inshallah today, we're going to start with the first one, which is um, beneficial knowledge. Beneficial knowledge. Um, the knowledge. Um, um, brothers and sisters who call, who are du'at, who, who are da'iyah, who call to the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the first thing in which you require is beneficial knowledge. Is what a da'i needs. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered us it. And Allah made it mandatory for the person to have knowledge before he even speaks or even implements anything. The person, before he even speaks and utter a word, or before he even implements anything, he needs to have knowledge. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said, فَعْلَمْ نَوْ أَنَّهُ لَا إِلَٰهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ 
واستغفر لذنبك وللمؤمنين والمؤمنات والله يعلم متقلبكم ومثواكم الله استاذ في الدرس ان سوره سوره محمد اي 19 الله said فاعلم نو هاف نوليدج فيرست انه لا اله الا الله that there is none worthy of worship except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you see so fa'lam which is to have knowledge it precedes uh, what implementing where's the evidence that it precedes implementing because Allah then said after that wastaghfir ask Allah for forgiveness asking for forgiveness what has to precede it is the knowledge first you see and that's why al imam al bukhari in his book kitab al ilm kitab al ilm bukhari chapter a ba- chapter and he called it babun chapter al ilm knowledge qabla al qawli wal amal knowledge precedes speech and action knowledge precedes speak speech and action bukhari chapter and we all need to know that bukhari rahimahullah his chaptering was based on his fiqh bukhari's chaptering is his fiqh meaning its rulings he's deriving from a hadith and ayat in which he chapters rahimahullah imam al bukhari so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered his prophet in that verse right now which is fa'lam annahu la ilaha illallah the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam allah ordered him two matters the first matter is knowledge and then after that to implement that knowledge to implement it because he said wastaghfir li dhanbika ask lord ask you allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um forgiveness knowledge is a condition knowledge is a condition for an action and a speech for it to be a correct for an action to be accepted to be taken in the condition prior to it or a speech is that the person has a, a knowledge of it that the person has knowledge of it and what we need to know is wala yakunu da'iyatu the da'i will not be ila allah mustaqima he will not be steadfast and straight in the path of allah illa bil ilm ash-shar'i unless he has islamic knowledge wa in lam yashab ad-da'i if the da'i it doesn't accompany him knowledge min awwal qadam yada'ahu if knowledge does not accompany him on the first step he takes to give da'wah if knowledge doesn't come with him um what will happen is the path in which he then will take there will be so much errors and so much mistakes in which he will cause and he will harm the da- the religion then he will benefit the religion and nowadays we tend to find a people who tell people to give da'wa and say we don't need knowledge we don't need to take knowledge knowledge, knowledge is wasting our time these people without a doubt they are qutta'u turuq they are cutting the straight path between allah and his creation uh, and they are the police officers of shayatin the shaytan shaytans how can a person embark on this great noble um, path and again he doesn't have knowledge and again he has no knowledge and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he praised the people of knowledge and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he mentioned their virtue and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he continued in praising them in the quran qala allah ta'ala allah said in surah az-zumr ayah 9 allah said qul say to them muhammad hal yastawi alladhina ya'lamuna are they the same the ones who know wal ladhina la ya'lamun and the ones that don't know a rhetorical question are they the ones who know and the ones that don't know are they the same the answer is clear no they are not the same the ones who know are far greater than the ones who don't know also allah said in another ayah yarfa'u allahu alladhina Allah lifts the status, the position of the believers. Believers have ranks over the disbelievers. A believer is higher than a disbeliever. Even if the disbeliever amazes you, 
however rich he is, how much money he has, how well respected he is in the community, doesn't matter. The best of the disbelievers and the worst of the Muslims, the worst of the Muslims is better. Because Allah says, Allah has lifted the ranks and the position of the believers over the disbelievers. Good. The scholars, that lifting that the believers are give, given, that rank that the believers have been given to Allah by the, to the believers over the disbelievers, the scholars, they share that with the believers. And then they also have an additional one over the believers, which Allah then says, وَالَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْعِلْمَ دَرَجَاتِ And Allah lifts the scholars higher ranks over the normal believer. So, the believer has a position higher than the disbeliever. And the scholar has a higher position than the disbeliever and the actual uh, normal layman believer. Also, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He exclusively affirmed um, a characteristics uh, a noble characteristics rather for the scholars over the um, normal Muslim, which is the characteristics of al khashya fearing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, humbling oneself for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that characteristics Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he exclusively affirmed it for the scholars over the normal general mass. As Allah said in Surah Al-Fatir, Ayah 28, Allah says, إِنَّمَا يَخْشَ اللَّهَ مِنْ عِبَادِهِ الْعُلَمَاءُ The ones that fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who have fear of him subhanahu wa ta'ala, are the scholars alone. The scholars are alone, the ones that fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Also, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said, and he clarified that the knowledge is a light for the carrier of it. The one that has this knowledge, he is carrying a light. As Allah said in the Quran about knowledge, Awa man kana maytan. Is it the one that is dead? Fahiyaynahu, we gave him life. وَجَعَلْنَا لَهُ And we made for him light. يَمْشِي بِهِ With that light, he walks amongst the people. فِي النَّاسِ Amongst the people. كَمَا مَثَلُهُ The likes, is, is it like him? The one who is in what? فِي الظُّلُمَاتِ He's in darkness. Is the one that's got light. Who's walking an, amongst the people with his light. Guiding himself. Not falling into any... Um, is he the same as the one who is in darknesses? In darknesses. Laysa bi kharijin minha, who is not, he's, he's not able to get out of the darkness. He's unable to get out of it. Allah then says, كَذَلُكَ زُيِّنَ لِلْكَافِرِينَ مَا كَانُوا يَعْمَلُونَ The darknesses that the disbelievers are in, because they don't have knowledge, Allah made beautiful for them the wrong that they are doing. Their actions have become made, made seem good to them. Why? Because they had no knowledge of what they are doing it to be evil and bad. But the scholar, when he does something wrong, easy for him is to leave the wrong and go to the good because of the knowledge in which he, he has. Also, the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said, uh, as Bukhari narrated in Kitab al-Ilm, and Imam al-Muslim narrated in Kitab al-Zakat, that the Messenger said, مَنْ يُرِدِ اللَّهُ بِهِ خَيْرًا Anyone who Allah wants for him good, يُفَقِّهُ فِي الدِّينِ Anyone who Allah wants good for him, Allah makes him understand the religion. So when a person has some understanding of the religion, it's a sign that Allah wants good for him. And the opposite holds truth, which is the mafhumul mukhalafah, which is the reverse understanding, is that anyone who doesn't get this ability to understand, who is derived, deprived from this, who is deprived from this great opportunity of having understanding, that individual, that individual, he is what? It's a sign that Allah did not want good for him. It's a sign that Allah did not want good a, for him. Also, Al Imam Al Bukhari, rahimahullah, he narrated in his Sahih, in Kitab Al Ilm, Babu Fadl, Man Alama, Man Alima wa Alama, Man Alima wa Alama. The virtue of the one who had knowledge, who acquired knowledge, who gained knowledge. And then after that, he taught the knowledge. The virtue of that one. Bukhari chapter it there. Muslim in Kitabu Al-Fadail. And you know, all of you all know, Imam Muslim did not chapter his book. So they most the scholars, majority of the scholars, they say that the chaptering in Sahih Muslim, Sahih Muslim, 
it's done by Al Imam Al Nawawi. He's the one who made the abwab of um, Kitab Sahih Muslim. But the Kitab, uh, Kitab this, Kitab that, Kitab that, Bukhari Muslim did it. But he just didn't do the babs. He didn't do the babs. Whereas Bukhari, he did the Kitab and he did the abwab. Bukhari. He, um, Imam Al Nawawi, chapter 4 Muslim in that is Sahih, Babu Bayani. مثل ما بعثني الله من الهدى والعلم. He used the hadith of the messenger in which we're going to read right now, which the messenger said, and this hadith is very powerful. It shows you the importance of knowledge, and how by having knowledge you become a successful da'i. The messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم said, مثل ما بعثني الله. The parable of that which Allah has sent me with. From guidance and knowledge that Allah sent me with, min al huda wal ilm, it is like kamathali ghayth. It's like rain. Asab arda, the earth, the rain came down and it came down on the earth. Fakanat minha ta'ifa. The earth becomes how many types in regards to the water? Two types. The land, the earth, when the rain comes down, the way it deals with the water is two types. The first type is earth in which takes in the water. And it produces something with the water that was given to it. The second type of uh, earth is the earth in which when the rain comes down on it, it doesn't accept the water. It's like the road. If a rain comes down on the, uh, on the, uh, on the road, the, it won't produce anything. Or even some places, in the, uh, some places where it isn't a built place. It's just like that. It never produces crops. But the rain, it fills it. It doesn't do. Whereas another place, small water, sufficient. It becomes green, grass, mashallah, animals can eat it, and the cattle can eat, and then it produces milk, and so, so, so do the people live on it. The Prophet saying, my knowledge that I came with, and the guidance in which I came with, it's like that rain that comes down from the sky. The way the people accept it are two types. The knowledge I came with, and the guidance, the way that the rain when it comes down, the earth is two types, so are the people two types in the guidance and the knowledge in which I came with. فَكَانَتْ مِنْهَا طَائِفَةٌ طَيِّبَةٌ قَبِلَتِ الْمَاءِ فَأَنْبَتَتِ الْكَلَى First earth is the earth when the rain comes down on it. The earth accepts the water. It produces and, um, grass. وَالْعُشْبُ الْكَثِيرُ The grass becomes a lot. وَكَانَ مِنْهَا أَجَادِبٌ أَمْسَكَتِ الْمَاءِ فَنَفَعَ اللَّهُ بِهَا النَّاسُ فَشَرِبُوا مِنْهَا وَسَقَوا وَزَرَعُوا Another one. It keeps the water. The people come, they take the water from it and they drink it. It's an earth which is good, beneficial. The second one is, وَأَصَابَ طَائِفَةٌ مِنْهَا مِنْهَا أُخْرَى Another one, next group, next one. هَا إِنَّمَا هِيَ قِيْعَانٌ It's a qi'an. Qi'an is the earth that doesn't, it doesn't produce anything. لَا تُمْسِكُ مَعَنْ It won't hold the water for you. Because there's the earth, some of them, what does it do? It swallows the water and it produces green for me, for you. Good. That's a good one, right? Because what does it produce for you? It produces green for you. There's another part of the earth, which what does it do? Um, it, doesn't, it doesn't take in the water. But what does it do? It's the good one. It's the second good one. What does it do? It doesn't take in the water. Meaning it doesn't absorb the water. But it keeps the water on the surface. But it's good. Because that water can then be moved from there and it, be, it can be taken, cleaned and drunk. This, that's, a, that's a beneficial water. The people are like that. A person who when the knowledge and the religion comes down, what does he do to him? It goes into his body, he takes it in and what does he do? He understands it, implements it and he gives it to the people. And the people can take it from him. Another one, what he doesn't do is he doesn't have much understanding of the religion. But he keeps the evidences. When the people come, he just reads it on them. And they benefit more from it than he does. That's a beneficial first type. The second one is a, a land which is hard. If the water comes down, if the water comes down, it doesn't hold the water for you. He won't hold the knowledge for you. He won't hold the guidance for you. That's one. The second one is he won't hold the, uh, he, 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 the, uh, the water will uh, absorb into him, but he's unable to produce it for you. It goes into him, but he's unable um, to produce uh, any form of 
um, uh, grass or greenery, he can't produce it uh, for you. That, then the messenger said, Mithlu, all of the example in how people are at the earth is towards water, is how the people are towards what? Mithlu man faquha fi dinillah. It is like that the one who understands the religion of Allah. Wa nafa'ahu, and it benefits him, and he benefits the people. The da'i, right? And he benefits the people. Ma ba'athani Allahu bi fa'alima, he starts to learn. Wa alama, and he teaches the people. Wa mithlu, and the likes of what? A person who has never lifted a head up for knowledge. He doesn't want to learn the religion. He doesn't even lift his head up for it. And he doesn't accept the guidance in which I was sent with. The earth that doesn't take the water. That doesn't accept the water. It doesn't produce anything for it. This hadith shows the importance of knowledge for the du'at. The call is to the path of Allah. How they need it in order to be prosperous and in what they produce that it's good and it's beneficial. And a da'i, he needs knowledge. And the reason why he needs knowledge is he's embarking on a noble, as I said, a noble and, uh, position he's taking on. And this position is the position of who? Our messenger, Muhammad ibn Abdullah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. What does he require? He wants to take the path in that which the messenger took, in the way he took it, in how he took it, that's what he wants. And that's why the messenger said, Qul, say to the people, هَذِهِ sabili." This is my path. If you don't have knowledge, you won't know the path of the messenger. The messenger, look what he said. Qul, in the Quran, Qul, هَذِهِ sabili." أَدْعُوا إِلَى اللَّهِ عَلَى بَصِيرَةٍ أَنَا I call to it. وَمَنِ اتَّبَعَنِي And those who follow me, call to that path. They call to what path? That path. Subhanallah, exalted is Allah. And I'm not from the I'm not from the polyest. The point here is the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa said, Qul hadihi sabili, this is my path. Adu'u I call to. I call to this path. If you don't have knowledge, what path are you calling to? Where, where, where are you calling the people to? Where are you taking the people? Where are you? Because the Messenger said, This is the path I call to. And the path of those who follow me, this is the path that they call to. This is the path that they are put on. This is the path that they are in. You see, the path that the messenger called to, we can know it with two places that we take it from. The book of Allah and the sunnah of the messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That's the two places to know. Other than that, we are unable to know where the messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, was, or how and what he was calling to, alayhi salatu wa salam. And we can't know if what we're calling to is in conjunction and it's correctly what he, alayhi salatu wa salam, was calling to. And that meaning, Al-Imam Shafi'i took it. And that's why he said, he said, كل العلوم سوى القرآن مشغلة إلا الحديث إلا إلا الحديث والعلم الفقه في الدين العلم ما كان فيه قال فيه قال وحدثنا وما سوى ذلك وسواس الشياطين. Al-Imam Shafi'i said, all forms of knowledge other than the Quran, it, all it does is distracts you. Except hadith. The Quran and the Hadith. وعلم الفقه and the knowledge of fiqh in the religion. فالعلم knowledge is ما كان that which is in it حدثنا قال حدثنا حدثنا the sanit changed. وما سوى ذلك and anything other than the kitab and the sunnah and the fiqh is what? وسواس الشياطين is the وسواس of shaytan is the وسواس of shaytan. So the the aim and the objective for what a student a da'i is what knowledge. The knowledge in which he needs to know is the book of Allah and the sunnah of the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Aqsamul ilm, the types of knowledge. Um, Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah did this dividing, inshallah. Um, the dividing of il knowledge. Before I mention the types, there's a beautiful quote in which you need to write at the top and it's always beneficial for you as a da'i that Imam uh, Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah said he said well, mamduh, the praiseworthy knowledge is الذي دل عليه الكتاب is the, the praiseworthy knowledge is the knowledge that um, it has been indicated it has been shown by the book of Allah and the sunnah of the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam 
and it's the knowledge that inherits الذي هو العلم الذي ورثه الأنبياء and it's the knowledge that the prophets um, inherited it is the knowledge that the prophets inherited from one another that they took from each other um, as Allah said in the Quran وورث سليمان داود سليمان inherited داود he didn't inherit from him uh, wealth he inherited him from knowledge the praiseworthy knowledge is the knowledge that we find in the kitab of Allah and the sunnah and the, in, the one that the prophet uh, uh, prophets inherited from one another and the messenger told us that the prophets they did not inherit from one another and wealth uh, he said inna al anbiya lam yuwarithu dirhaman wala dinara wa inna ma warathu al ilm fa man akhadha akhadha bi hadhin wa firin the prophets they did not inherit dinar and dirham that's not what they left behind for the people but they left behind for the people uh, knowledge anyone who takes that knowledge for verily he has taken a great portion great great noble thing knowledge is three types <laughs> the first one is al ilmu billah knowledge of allah his names his characteristics that's the first type knowledge of allah is allah's existence allah's characteristics and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's names. That is the first type. So it's the knowledge of Allah's existence subhanahu wa ta'ala, um, Allah's names, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's. So it's basically knowledge of Allah's tawheed al-rububiyya, tawheed al-uluhiyya, and tawheed al-asma'i wa-sifat. That's the first type of knowledge. And that is summarized in Surah Al-Ikhlas and Surah Ayat Al-Kursi. That the da'i needs to understand thoroughly, thoroughly. He needs to understand it. The Surah Al-Ikhlas very well. Al-Ladhi huwa thuluthu al-Qur'an. Surah Al-Ikhlas is one third of the Qur'an. Ayat Al-Kursi is the best ayah in the Qur'an. The best verse in the Qur'an. The second form of knowledge that the da'i requires more, more, more than anyone else is Al-Ilmu bima akhbar Allahu bihi. The knowledge in that which Allah has informed us of. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mimma kana that which was. من الأمور الماضية that which was in the in the past history that matters which have taken place وما يكون من الأمور المستقبلة مستقبلة and the matters that are going to be in the future وما هو كائن من الأمور الحاضرة and the matters that will actually take place in this present time that we live in the da'i needs to know it so that is what knowing the verses of the قصص the stories that have happened والوعد the promises والوعيد and the warnings وصفة الجنة the descriptions of the جنة والنار and the description of the hellfire and and and, and, and the likes of that and the likes of uh, that the third type of knowledge that the da'i requires is what العلم to know the knowledge بما أمر الله بما أمر الله به um, the matters that pertain to that which Allah has ordered سبحانه وتعالى that which Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala had ordered us like the salat and its ahkam the fasting and its ahkam um, the zakat and its ahkam hajj and its ahkam and matters pertaining to that the da'i should know it he should have good understanding of fiqh also he also needs to know the chapters of uh, al buyu' uh, transactions and matters pertaining to that zawaj marriage and matters regarding that he needs to also know um, and the hudud and the qisas and matters pertaining to that. Rulings. In books of fiqh, he has to have understanding of that which Allah commanded. Subhanahu uh, wa ta'ala. And all of that which I said, Ibn al-Qayyim summarized it in his, uh, uh, his, uh, his, uh, his nuniyya. Ibn al-Qayyim said, Al-ilmu aqsamu thalathatun ma laha min rabi'in wal haqqi dhu tibiyani ilmu bi awsafi al-ilahi wa fi'lihi وكذلك الأسماء للرحمن والأمر والنهي الذي هو دينه وجزاؤه يوم الميعاد الثاني. Those three Ibn al-Qayyim summarized it in his book رحمه الله.